Hello, this is Jill and Joseph with Idle One House, and that's Beans. And today we're going to go over um, just how we groom our Angoras, just to keep their fur nice and clean and free of mats. I use a, what is that called? Grooming. <laughs> a grooming table, um, because I don't, I'm pretty short and I don't have a really good lap to keep them on my lap, so I just put them on the grooming table there. Uh, Joseph just uses his lap, which they actually really prefer, I think. Um, that's also good for the human connection, I think. So we're just going to get started. You can see Beans is already kind of just chillaxing and enjoying spending time with the fam. These are the tools that we use, just a regular what's called slicker brush. You can All of these you can just get at like Walmart. Regular, just scissors. Well, this is actually a dreadlock comb that we got on Amazon.com, but you should be able to get it at, like, a beauty supply store. Um, little clippers, a rake that we usually just use for harvesting wool, so we probably won't even mess with that tonight. We raise our angoras for harvesting wool, but like I said, today we're actually just going to go over the basic grooming process. So, we use the slicker brush first and give them what we call a once-over. And just go through and comb all over their body and feel for mats and the places that might need some attention. Comb out their little face and their cheeks and their furnishings behind their neck. It's really sensitive, delicate skin back there, but also mats up easy, so don't forget about that. And as you can see, even though he is kind of tugging, Beans is pretty chill. So, is there's a mat? a mat there I'm going to have to come back to. Okay. And it's good to lift up the hair and just start combing down through and just make sure everything is kosher and good. I'm only holding this with my fingertips. It's very light pressure. We like to focus on what we call compassionate grooming. If Beans was super hyper or just not feeling it, we would probably just take him back out to the touch. If there are really bad mats, you kind of just have to work with the rabbit being super hyper to try and get him out. Make sure you don't mistake their little tails for mats. <laughs> <laughs> He's pretty chill. <clears throat> so we save their fur here and then we I mean put all their mats in a bucket and of course their garbage. But okay. So you have I found a mat. What are you going to do? Well I do like to use the rake to isolate it a bit. Okay. And if there are any things that are just starting to mat but but haven't really then uh, that will pull them out, uh, kind of work them out a little bit. Um, I would just ever. suggest to use a little bit of caution with the rake, because as you can yes. see, it does help isolate it, but if you pull too hard, you might end up hurting the rabbit. Again, I'm just barely holding it with the lightest pressure, so if it does snag, it will pull out of my fingers instead of pulling on the rabbit's yeah. fur. But see here, I've seen a little bit that's starting to come out, down here on his foot, there's a little tiny one starting, and this larger one on his cheek that uh, that's kind of floating. Mm -hmm. And those are all ones that I can see and feel now. So little ones like this will just fall right out. So Angora is about every three to four months will shed, and that is a great opportunity to uh, make sure you do a thorough cleaning so to speak, if there have been mats that you needed to wait to grow out, and we'll talk more about that. So here's the worst of this mat. Okay. My fingers are underneath it, but I'm not pulling it. I'm just simply keeping my fingers underneath it so that I know how far down I can go. I put the scissors in, and then they are turned uh, perpendicular to the body of the rabbit, and then I cut underneath the mat. Awesome. 
you never want to cut parallel to the body because then it's really easy to snag the skin. When you, even if you're really close to the skin, lay down the scissors, then lift them up to a 90 degree angle and cut. That will keep you from ever cutting the skin. And you never, when you get a hold of a mat, you never want to tug at it before cutting it because that will, that will just pull the skin up. Their skin is so flexible, it'll just pull right up and you can cut, cut right into it. So you never want to do that. Here's something else. Let me take the slicker to it a little bit to straighten out. We have a cat batting at the screen. <laughs> it's probably a moth trying to get in. This is a family affair. There's our dog, Rascal, who's taking a nap. And here's one of our cats, River, who's totally like, why are you talking and filming this? So this mat, a lot of it has come out just by hitting it with a slicker. All this was connected. Now it's loose. This was, this has kind of all come loose. So again, I go under, turn, and cut. And their paws are kind of delicate. They don't tend to like having their paws worked on. So you have to be judicial about how far you want to go. But if it's open and easy to get to, go ahead and take those off. I see another little one over on his toe right here that is just comes right off. As you can see, Beans is really just still relaxed and kind of chill. He might get curious, but he's not nervous at all. Beans does have a peculiarity. He doesn't like anything else to be on my lap except him. So he's not too happy about these sitting there. <laughs> so I will move them before he starts trying to kick them off. Okay. Now their bums tend to mat up. Mm -hmm. Quite a lot. So this is area that you really need to to brush out and isolate these mats. Of course, the more often you groom them, the fewer mats you'll have. So, you know, when we got one of our rabbits, she obviously had, she was basically sheared because she was, had a lot of mats that had to be cut out of her. What do you suggest is the best way if they are mats that have just built up and are super close to the skin? Okay, so like this one here, for example, here's his tail. He's kind of trying to hide it from me, but... Um, there's this set of mats here that they're fairly big and they're fairly close to the skin. Mm -hmm. So what you want to do is you want to get down to them as close as you can. Let me see if I can do this with him being at this angle. It's a little awkward. And again, cut through it like this. And I was only able to cut through the mat. I couldn't cut under it. Mm -hmm. But that's totally okay. You cut through as close as you can to the skin, but don't try to to expose the skin if the mat is right against it. Mm -hmm. Just cut right through the mat. The thicker mats will be hard. You need, you need a fairly sturdy set of scissors. Regular hair cutting scissors will not get through them. Mm -hmm. um, and you let the you let the mat that's left just just leave it alone and as their hair grows, the mat will come up on the fresh hair and then you can cut it off. But you also want to maybe trim around them so they're not new hair, you know, fresh hair that's getting trapped into that mat. Mm -hmm. But um, they shed their hair frequently. So if you can just keep the mat under control, after a little while, um, they will basically shed it on their own and it will, it can just, you can just lightly pull it out. It will just, it'll just come right out just like some of their other their other uh, wool, their other fur, um, and it's 
not something you really have to have to struggle with. Now for mats on their tummy, we have to tag team it. Some rabbits, after a while, are comfortable with just laying on their back. And if you roll them over on their back on your lap and just pet them, and you can tell when they start to calm down, but keep them on their back, you can just trim their bellies. Our rabbits have not ever gotten comfortable with that. So we have to tag team and basically one of us holds them up on their hind legs while the other one goes through and just clips their belly. Yep, hold them like this. Yep. Um, he feels a little fairly comfortable because his back is against my chest and his he's sitting on my lap. I have one hand around his, around his chest holding him, uh, which is ex exposes his belly. But um, we just trimmed him up see, pretty good. But he's yeah. fairly trimmed up. But you can see that yes, there are definitely some 